The vegan mojito. Good. All right. Let's get started. Good morning. Um, God, it feels like forever, but it probably wasn't forever. It just feels like I've done a lot since, since I've seen you guys last. <laughs> um, no, you don't know that. You don't know that. Um, good. So, formula families. All right. I'm just going to get started with the seminar. I don't know. There's no intro necessary. Uh, formula families. Um, this is quite a, it's a really fun seminar. A bit of a big workload ahead of us this weekend because we will be talking about a lot of formulas. Um, the more formulas you already know by now, the more the easier this is going to be. We're going to take a walk together, right? We're basically going to take a walk. And uh, we're going to go hiking on trails. And one trail will lead to the next trail. We'll hook up with the next trail and then kind of just navigate this terrain. And what we're going to try to do is that we, we've started with this whole series with uh, single herbs. And we already talked about formulas already at the time when we did the single herbs because we looked at the single herb in a formulaic context. And I basically said at that time, hey, you know, this herb, according to the Ben Jing, does this and this and this. And lo and behold, Don Don Jing has a formula in which he uses this herb in this particular capacity. Right? So that's kind of illustrating what the herbs do in a certain formulaic context to kind of show how Zhang Dongjing was definitely embodying the whole Ben Cao Jing uh, discourse on herbs. And then we went into just Shahanan theory as far as physiology, pathology, the, the analysis of problems and things like that. And then I showed to you actually by, by using these Neijing, these Neijing based sets of theories that Zhang Dongjing, his way of thinking was a very Huang Di Neijing way of thinking. Right? So the theoretical construct of his mind was Huang Di Neijing and, and, and using opening, closing, pivoting, and things like that. Right? And then we went to the diagnostic phase of the, of, the, uh, of the understanding, which is that, okay, how are we going to diagnose illness? Right? And we got two main modalities. Right? One is by taking the pulse, and one is by palpating the abdomen. And then when we got there, we basically broke it down into a very basic building block. And the very basic building block was identified by the name of an herb. So we started from the name of an herb, which is what I call the, the herb method, right? Uh, and then we said, what is a greater abdomen or what is a greater pulse? Right? What is a dangwe abdomen? What's a dangwe pulse? What's a da huang abdomen? What's a da huang pulse? And so forth. So we started to kind of bring all the information we had into these very basic building blocks. So that we would set ourselves up then, because once we're in clinic, and we identify, and in the, the, the user interface of the system is very simple. I mean, grasping full control over the user interface <laughs> takes a lot of study and takes some time, right? Because you've got to memorize the pulses and you've got to calibrate your finger, feeling in your fingers and things like that. But the actual user interface itself is very clutter-free. It's kind of like, it's definitely a Mac. It's not a PC, right? It's definitely a Mac, right? And so it's clutter-free, It's you know, so you just... Take the pulse, and then, oh, yeah, that's, that's a greater pulse. So I already know that this patient is going to need a formula with greater in it, right? So the next challenge is then, how do I find that formula? Because it's not just going to be greater tongue. There's lots of formulas with greater in it. So then we kind of somehow need to be able to, from there, retrieve the formula. Now, we, we already have a way of doing that, which is that this pulse translates into this prescription. So we said this is the pulse for that prescription. That's one way of doing it, right? But there's a lot more prescriptions in existence than we've already, than I've introduced pulses for, right? And I will never ever be, be introducing you a pulse for every prescription out there because it's not been cataloged yet to that extent. And even if you catalog it to that extent, it's still not never going to be complete because it's a very uh, it's a, it's an it's a live organism. This system is alive. It's alive. And so it's never really going to be uh, finite. It's never going to be settled and in okay, this is only these possibilities and never anything beyond that. No. As you grasp the system of diagnosis, you'll continuously be discovering different pulse poth possibilities for different formulas as you work with your particular patient demographic in your particular locale, because that changes. Right? My teacher saw a lot of stuff in Sichuan that we might not see, and I see stuff up in the Pacific Northwest that you guys don't see here uh, in, this, in Southern California. Right? Things change, right? so you'll be able to figure out different things. So you've got to calibrate yourself properly. 
So then sometimes you'll have a pulse and you kind of know what direction to look into, but it doesn't, an it doesn't really correspond yet to just the, the straightforward thing. So then you'll have to kind of see, okay, well, got to go take it back to the drawing board. And then you got to look inside your mind and see, well, I obviously I need a Grager formula, and there's also a Bishop pulse, so I need a formula that has Grager because of this pulse and Bishop because of that pulse. So what are all the Grager Bishop possibilities in this system? Right? So then normally, you, you know, what happens a lot with nowadays the students in Chinese medicine schools is that then they start just leafing through the formula textbook because they haven't really made the formulas their own. Like they haven't really, they don't own the formulas. It's not theirs yet, right? Which is fine. That is a process that takes time. I told you that you'll be memorizing formulas for the rest of your life. I am still memorizing formulas, not because I don't know them. It's just because I still forget them too. Like if there's a formula that I haven't used, I would say my cutoff is about six months. If I haven't used the formula in six months, then I might. Some are so specific that I will never forget them. But some are like, uh, yeah, was that herb? I mean, I don't ever forget ingredients anymore, but I sometimes still forget a dosage of an ingredient, you know, and I'll be like, oh crap, was that, was that at six or was that at nine, you know, like, then I'll have to go back and revisit that in the book and rememorize it, and then it will be in the, in my active list of knowledge again, and then I'll be fine again for the next six months, so that's normal, we all have to go through that, but there is no book that is cataloged according to the diagnostics that we use here, there is no book that says, chapter one, all the Grager formulas. Chapter two, all the Fulling formulas. Chapter three, all the Shigao formulas. Chapter four, all the whatever, you know, there's no book like that, right? I, I mean, Dr. Huang Huang's book on the 10 formula families uses this kind of structure, right? Because he's also, he, when Dr. Huang did his research to write that book, he worked off of the works of Xu Tai and Yoshimasu Todo Right, which, is, which are exactly the books that I worked off of when I was developing this seminar years back. Right, so it's good that there's a book like that out there. Right? Although, uh, you know, he also includes non Chahan formulas in his, in his book, which is fine. Uh, you know, I just don't do that. Right? I, I just kind of stick with the, only the Jingfang. And so um, we're going to somehow have to figure out a way of, in absence of a book that really makes that easy, somehow we're going to have to figure out a way to do it in our minds, right? And using the formula families is going to mean that we are going to reorganize the material in our brains. Like, so we have this whole, all these formulas in our brain now, but right now they might just be organized by TCM patterns or by, I don't know, well, I don't know how, it's, how your brain is organized or... <laughs> or not organized. <laughs> and maybe it's just like, you know, it's like your purse and you just put all the formulas in there and you just close the purse. I don't know, something like that. And you shake it up and something like that. I don't know. But um, we're going to have to reorganize our brains and, and, and kind of catalog the material differently, <coughs> put different tags on everything, right? So, for example, we'll have formulas that have Guija in it. And that's the Guija family. And the Guija family is like having the surname Li in Chinese. You know what I mean? It's like it's a big family. There's a lot of people with the surname Li, and they all came from the first Li, and they all are, you know, they, the, if you met people who are, have a surname Li in China, they will always say they, they are like descendants from like the, some emperor in the Qin dynasty or whatever. And I say, yeah, we're a descendant from uh, Li Shiju or whatever. And I'm like, dude, like there's half a billion descendants from that guy, okay? So he was a very active individual. <laughs> and um, it's nothing special. And, and so then you have Lee, and then Lee married with somebody else. So you have Guizhou, and then Guizhou married into the Baishao family. So they had kids, and the kids were Guizhou Baishao. And then you have a subfamily of those two branch, of those two stems, right? And then you have a little branch. And then the kids, like there was a member of the Guizhou Baishao family who then married with the uh, with the, uh, I don't know, Fuzi family, right? And then married into that family. So that became a Guizhou Fuzi Baishao uh, subfamily of that branch. So ultimately, we're going to start tracing the pedigree, the, the ancestry of these formulas. And as you do that, you kind of, the formula family gets smaller, 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 until you ultimately end up with one, two, three possible answers to your riddle, which is the clinical patient in front of, the patient in a clinical situation in front of you, right? That's the ultimate answer that you want to get to, like, how do I fix this riddle, All right? So basically, it'll allow you to organize the material in your brain 
the more formulas you know, the more things you'll now be able to put in boxes and label and tag properly so that for easy, fast retrieval, right? Uh, but at least the first thing we have to do is to structure the brain. And then, so then very easily, grade your Baisha pulse. You're gonna check your, you know, checks and balances. Okay, is there a grade your Baisha abdomen? Oh, yes, there is. Okay, we definitely need a grade your Baisha formula. What are all the possible Grager Baishaw formulas? Then you can look at the Grager Baishaw formulas, right? These and these and these are my Grager Baishaw formulas. Okay, of these Grager Baishaw formulas, which ones actually also treat the symptoms that now this patient is having in front of me? Right? If a patient comes in, needs a Grager Baishaw formula, and their main problem is like an acute, common cold, you know, temperature dysregulation, sweating, well, then you go with the Grager tongue and all of its derivatives. Right? If they come in and it's much more uh, joint problems and B syndrome and inflammation in the joints and stuff, then you go with those, that set of formulas, which often will have combinations with some type of acne or something like that. Right? If it's much more that they need a greater Baisha formula, but they just have a lot of deficiency and fatigue, then you go with the Jenzong center constructing family of, of formulas or like the Sinti one, like the deficiency taxation formulas, for example. Right? Or et cetera, et cetera. So the symptom will then kind of also tell you what subclass of Gwajir Baisha formulas to look at. I mean, of course, Gwajir Baisha formulas might be a bad example because there's just so many of them, right? Um, so that's why you, the, we will never teach a formula family called the Ganshao family for the obvious reasons, right? I mean, uh, yeah, we're all kind of, yeah, it's kind of like saying, like, yeah, we're all members of the human race, right? And there's a few aliens out there that aren't, but there's not many, right? So that's kind of like that. So that wouldn't really be valuable. So um, basically we're going to catalog the material. Right? So, so what we're going to do is we're going to... Um, so fun, one thing is for clinical use. Second reason is also just for your own uh, study purposes it'll be a great tool to use. Right? Because once, first of all you catalog it for easy retrieval. Second of all when you start to see the uh, evolutions and uh, variations on certain themes. Formula X might be a modification of formula Y. And so if you know, let's say formula X might, it might be, uh, like formula X becomes formula Y, you modify it further, becomes formula Z. So once you can start to see those little uh, give and take kind of changes on every formula, then it becomes a lot easier to memorize, right? For example, Guggentang, oh yeah, Guggentang, is actually Ma Huang, uh, the Guizhi Jia Gugentang plus Ma Huang, right? And Guizhi Jia Gugentang is nothing but Guizhi Tang plus Gugen, right? So you know Guizhi Tang, you add Gugen to it, Guizhi Jia Gugentang, you add Ma Huang to it, you have Gugentang, right? So just like that, immediately you're able to memorize, very easily memorize three formulas, effortlessly, right? Because you, actually the only effort that you put in was memorizing Guizhi Tang. And then the rest is just one herb extra, one herb extra. So how simple can that be, right? So if you can start to see that, you see the evolution of the prescriptions, it becomes a lot easier to memorize. You're like, yeah, this formula is basically a variation on the theme of formula this and this and this. So to memorize that becomes a lot easier because you could see the origin of it. It's kind of like, oh, I know why you're this way because you're so-and-so. Uh, such and such, you're the son of such and such, and <laughs> your uncle, so and so, yeah, we know him well too. No wonder you drink a lot, you know, <laughs> because uncle drank a lot. For example, so you can kind of see why, why it is like that, you know, why, why a formula is the way it is, because it's a modification of this or that, and, and it makes it easier to memorize. So practically for your study, uh, cataloging the information in your brain in, in, in formula families helps a lot as well. So what is a formula family and where does it come from? In, uh, I don't think I have the line mentioned here. I should have probably just mentioned it. But in the Tayin chapter line, psh, two, 200, uh, in the two, what's the number, 270s or 280 or something, like, around, that, and around that number in the Tayin chapter, uh, Zhang Dongjing, there's a line that says, um, when there's diarrhea without thirst, it belongs to Taiyin, for there is cold in the solid organs which need to be warmed, and the Sunni family is uh, indicated. Right? 
So um, basically, in that line, he uses the word be, be here, this one here, right? And be basically means generation, a generation, or a, a just like a, you know, like if you have generations in, in family relationships, like, you know, you'll say, oh, your chen be means like the generation that preceded you, like there's, the, there's one generation or so, or two or so before you, the ones that came before you. And ho be is the ones that are your younger generation, right? Um, so it's a, it's a generation, it's a family kind of, it's a word that alludes to a family relationship, a hierarchical family relationship, right? It's a grouping of individuals, right? Because my ancestors is a grouping of in individuals. Obviously, there wasn't just one. At least there's two ancestors, right? <laughs> Otherwise, I wouldn't be here, right? So there's like a, a grouping of individuals that is being referred to, right? So basically, it's often known as a fang bei or a fang zu is also a word that's often used, not by Zhang Dongjing. Only Zhang Dongjing uses the word bei, and he, and he alludes to the si ni bei, which is the si ni formula family, right? Not th that thing with fennel in it. And uh, that's a, a bit of an inside joke, or not. And so um, it's the Sunni formula family. It's not uh, a formula in and of itself. The Sunni Bay is the Sunni formula family. All the formulas that treat the four cold extremities, right, by using ganjang as its primary ingredient, because ganjang is the primary herb that allows the yang to be stabilized inside the earth, which will then lead to the warming of the hands, and of course, um, fuzi to supply the warmth that you're trying to stabilize inside the earth, right? That's the core of those family, of, of that family, ganjang and fuzi. So core treatment for Taiyin disease is a ganjang and fuzi treatment, right? Zhu means an ethnic group, right? Minzu is a, a people or an ethnic group, right? Uh, in Chinese, if we, if we talk about ethnic minorities, they call it sao su minzu. Sao su means of lesser number, like a, an ethnic group that is not the dominant ethnic group. It's a lesser uh, number of people. So it, it, that would be what we call sao su minzu. Right? Uh, you've got 58 different ethnic minorities in China or something like that, or 56, something like that. Right? So that's kind of using the word zu. Fang zu is used a lot in the literature, in the Shanghai commentaries throughout history. Fang bei is used by Zhang Dongjing himself. Later, this was ultimately called Lei Fang. Um, Lei Fang is more, uh, more of a Ming Dynasty, Qing Dynasty term for the, for the same concept. It just means formula categories or categorized formulas. Fang huh? Lei, Lei Fang, it's often kind of flipped around. It's the same thing. It basically means uh, formulas. If you put two things in one category, it means that those two things have something in common. Right? I mean, uh, you put... You know, you put a Porsche, a Ferrari, a Lamborghini in one category because they're all sports cars, right? You put, uh, you put your Skoda uh, and a Lada in one family because they're all shitty cars. You know what I mean? It's like how you categorize things. Just saying, you know, just saying. Eastern, you know. I don't know if you, you guys know Skoda and Lada? No. Eastern yeah. European? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd rather get 100,000 out of a Porsche, though. <laughs> but, but that's just me. And um, <laughs> um, so it's a category. And why would you put th two things in one category? Because they belong in, in that one thing. And it's like, oh, it's like, oh, yeah, this is the Versluis family, right? Because they all have the surname Versluis. They all have you know, a blood link. So that's why we put them all in, in one category. Right, and it's, it's banned in many countries. And um, so Lei Fang is used more later, like nowadays, like, uh, you know, like Huang Huang uses the term, and, and that term mostly comes from these two guys, Xu Lingtai and Todo Yoshimasu. Xu Lingtai and Todo Yoshimasu, I know Dr. Huang did a study on them, I don't know what his finding was, but when he did his one year uh, stint in Japan, he did like a, a comparative study between those two guys. One lived in China, one lived in Japan. There is no knowledge, to my knowledge at least, I don't know if he found anything, but there's no knowledge that those guys ever talked to each other or knew of each other. However, they both wrote books that were almost identical. I mean, not identical in, the, in, the ty in, in what they wrote, but in the structure of what they wrote. They both wrote books that became the more prominent and more kind of trailblazing books about looking at formulas from this categorization perspective. So it's really weird to see this kind of them, them kind of doing it around the same time in different places, but they're kind of doing the same thing. 
who knows? Who knows, right? Um, I don't know. Maybe they just they just had an iPhone or something. I don't know. And so these are the books that 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 also I've worked on. I loved reading those when I was studying formulas. I mean, because I did formulas in in grad school, right? So I loved reading it because it's very clear, very concise, organized very nicely, as opposed to the current organization of of the TCM formula textbooks, which sucks. I mean, plain sucks, because it's a very difficult to use organization, right? Uh, pungent warm surface releasing, pungent cold surface releasing, surface releasing interior tonifying. I mean, like, how do you find, like, how do you even, so your mind now has to go in clinic, oh, this is a, I don't know, uh, whatever surface pattern, and I need to find a pungent warm surface releasing formula, and then you've got to start going through the book to see which one fits the best. I mean, it just doesn't make sense. It is not a clinical approach. It doesn't make sense. It is slow. It is, it's, it's, it's just a kind of a fabrication of an inferior mind. The inferior mind being, um, you know, 1950s communist China, you know, inferior mind. Just to, to try to somehow do a very linear uh, thing, you know, just a very linear thing and a very linear... Um, uh, organization of originally nonlinear material and, and of course that you set yourself up for tremendous failure that way you failed they failed generation upon generation of Chinese Chinese uh, medicine students and therefore doctors right we were set up to fail from the get-go the structure of the organ of the organization of the education the structure of the organization uh, the structure of the uh, educational uh, uh, models sets you up for failure in clinic because your brain just like, wait, like, uh, how do I translate this? For, how do I go from here to here? There is no interface, no direct interface. This system has a very clear direct interface, right? You know the herbs, you know the theory, you diagnose. The diagnose interface is easy to use. It gives you a very easy answer. You need a Granger-based formula. You need a bishal based formula. You, this patient, you know, has abdominal pain because it's bishal versus this patient has abdominal pain because it's foods, you know. And then immediately you know, okay, I need a foods of formula for abdominal pain. Which foods of formulas for abdominal pain do I have? Think in my brain, my foods of formula family. Which of these work on the abdomen? There's only that many. And you've already just gone from 300 formulas to five. And then you just say, okay, do you have this symptom, yes or no? No, oh, we don't need this one. Uh, do you have this symptom, yes or no? No, oh, we don't need this one either. Okay, then you must have this symptom. Oh, I do. Aha, uh -huh, of course you do. Because there's only one formula left that is of the possi you know, there's only one possibility left. Right, so that's basically how it works. That's basically how it works. So a very simple uh, system, very clinically fast. Good, so what decides on formula family membership? Like how do you get into the club, right? Aside knowing the bouncer, how do you get in? Well, basically, uh, you could be married to a member of the club owners, right? So basically, uh, if you want to be in, Mac in the McDonald clan, you better marry yourself into the McDonald clan because if you don't have the surname McDonald's, you're just not a McDonald. I mean, that's just a fact. You know, to get into a family, you obviously, there's only two ways. You're born into it or you marry into it, right? So that's, that's the same thing here. So being part of a family of formulas means that... Uh, you got to figure out what decides, like what is the name of the formula family, right? So we're going to name the formula family after one individual herb, right? After the, the primary individual that decided on this, on this club, right? Who was the founder of this club? Who was the founder of this family? Well, McDonald was the founder of this, of this family. He was the first one. The whole thing is named after him, right? So the same thing with herbal formulas. It's going to be named after one herb. To start with, the, the, the big families are going to be named after one herb. It's not a hyphenated name yet, not yet. You ha to hyphenate, you got to get married, right? But the in initial family is not hyphenated, right? So you start with one herb. And, of course, that's what we call the herb method. And we've talked about the same thing. When we did pulse diagnosis, we also talked about the herb methods. Remember, we talked about... Um, uh, the herb pulse method, uh, uh, um, uh, the, you know those those tables that we looked at, right? Oh, uh, this is uh, this is a greater pulse, but greater pulses had a lot of options. Right? You could have you could have a greater pulse, but the patient could have palpitations. You could have a greater pulse, but the patient could ha be having a common cold. You can have a greater pulse, but the page, patient is having uh, blood stasis or whatever stuff like that. You know, like that. So so it's all greater, but they're not doing the same thing. They're not doing the same thing. So 
the ERB method, what we call the Yaofa, the ERB method, decides on membership. So if you have Guizhou in, in, inside of you, right, you got some McDonald blood inside of you, then you are McDonald family. So you have Guizhou in your formula, you are Guizhou formula family. Right? But, and therefore, obviously, we will not talk about Ganshao because there's too many formulas that have Ganshao in them. So that would be, that would be misleading. Right? So uh, Guizhou formula family because there's Guizhou inside. And then you have to understand, of course, there's a whole spectrum of functions under that one label Guizhou. And that spectrum of functions is what we kind of talked about in the archetypes classes. Right? But again, we didn't necessarily, I did not set out to give you a reductionist instruction at that time, not yet. It's only towards the end that we'll really boil it down to some basics and we'll reduce the size of everything. It's kind of like you're cooking and then you kind of, at the end you kind of, uh, it, it's very wet, your sauce is very wet and at the end you kind of uh, condense it by kind of boiling it down to just a thicker, more concentrated version, right? And that's what we'll go to towards the end, not in the beginning. In the beginning, it's all the flavors going in and we're not really, uh, boiling it down to something smaller. Towards the end, like when we have like our case studies class, case studies in clinical strategies, it'll be very, very straightforward. I'll say, patient walks in and acute, acute uh, onset of abdominal pain. What are all the possible options? Well, Taiyang abdominal pain, Yang Ming abdominal pain, Xiaoyang abdominal pain, Taiyin abdominal pain, Xiaoyin abdominal pain, and Jiayin abdominal pain. Boom, six options. Thank you very much. Right? That's when I bring it down to the core basics of things. So then in clinic, you'll be, okay, patient walks in, you already have reduced the options drastically, but not yet at this stage, right? So the same thing. So we talked a lot about all the different functions ascribed to the different herbs from a Benzhaojing perspective. We're going to start boiling it down a little bit, right? What are the core functions of Guizhou, right? And the core functions of Guizhou in this system, of course, is going to be tonification of heart yang, then sending that heart yang that you tonify to the periphery too, uh, nourish or, or, or strengthen or warm the protective, right? And then uh, basically uh, by warming protective and tonifying heart young, then you can already control the water, right? Because then you link it with water herbs. So that's really the same function. Then actually the other, the only one other function that's not really linked yet is blood movement, right? So you'll see like three primary functions that we'll, we'll work on, right? P three primary. But then you can still break those up into smaller, more specific ones. But the full spectrum function of an herb is what we call the herb method. Because if you're a Guajir formula family, if you're a Guajir formula as part of the Guajir formula family, you don't really know yet what exactly type of formula it is. Is it a blood moving Guajir based formula? Or is it the water metabolism promoting Guajir based formula? Or is it a, uh, a emotional kind of heart, kind of heart rate regulating uh, Guajir based formula? You don't know that yet if you just say I'm a Guajir. I'm Guajir family. You don't really know if you're that, that branch of the family or if you're this branch of the family. Are you, the, are you, are you like related to the East Coast? branch of the family or the West Coast branch of the family, right? You don't know that yet just from face value. As soon as then you start to elaborate, then it gets more clear, right? So the full spectrum of a, of a core herb. Now, it's very interesting, like, simply put, when an herb is in a formula, that formula belongs to that herb family. Pretty straightforward. That's simply put. However, sometimes an herb is in a formula very prominently. Sometimes an herb is in a formula very mildly, very, just very uh, kind of inconspicuously. Some formulas are huge, and then having that one herb in there, relative to the size of the formula and the presence of all the other ingredients, might not necessarily be that huge of a deal. Right? Some formulas are tiny, and although an herb is in that formula at a very low dose, because the formula is so small, this is a huge deal. You know what I mean? So, um, if you say that uh, what would be an example? For example, you think of Shu Yuan, which is the Shan Yao Wan, right? which is this very generic kind of what I say, you know, like a Chinese medicine multivitamin kind of an approach. It's got all this nourishing stuff in it and it's really good for you, but it doesn't treat anything specific, but it treats a lot of things or prevents a lot of things, prevents you from getting sick, right? There's Ganjang in that formula, right? So uh, Ganjang is a very prominent herb. It's one of the archetypes. It's core for the Tai confirmation. It's very prominent. But in the larger context of the 21 ingredients of that whole formula, you're like, is this a Ganjang formula family prescription? It is. It definitely is. I mean, Ganjang is definitely in there. But 
would you ever identify that formula as a ganjang based formula? No. I mean, there's obviously Shanyao being so big in that formula makes it, of course, much more dominant. And then another, beyond Shanyao and Ganjang, there's another 19 herbs in there that all have varying degrees of importance in that formula. So you can't really, I mean, you, it is true, but you wouldn't really identify Shanyao from Ganjang. You can't all of a sudden take a pulse and like, oh, I have a Ganjang pulse. Shanyao one, oh my God, how, I mean, <laughs> your, your mind cannot do that. You can't do that. The only way you can identify Shui Wan is just from a deficiency taxation pulse, which is based on the whole chapter of illnesses that it is in. Just a big, honking, empty, hollow right pulse. Done. That's it. If you got that without any specifics, that formula could be a, one of the uh, formulas you might have to use. But you have no particular certainty on that because it's that kind of a formula. It's, it's none of those very direct, linear, Shanghan, nice black and white, yin yang based formulas. It's just kind of a it's a more, you know, generic kind of could be this, could be that kind of a formula, right? But if you look at, for example, Suni Tang, or Suni Tang, I mean, four and a half grams of Ganjang, I mean, it's not a lot compared to, I mean, even simple formulas like, I don't know, Sha Qing Long Tang, or Chai Hu Gui Ganjang Tang, or just how you modify Sha Chai Hu Tang for a cough, it's got more Ganjang in it than you have in Suni Tang. But it's only three ingredients. And Sini Tang, by virtue of you know, being Sini, without Ganjang, you can't even treat Sini. Remember that I, what I said, that any foods of formula, any foods of formula without uh, Ganjang in it can be used even when the person's hands are warm. It's only the foods of Ganjang combinations that are used when the patient's hands are cold. Right? That's the dead giveaway right there. So the prominence of Ganjang in that formula, though at a very inferior dose, but combined with foods in the formula. Com just the prominence of, of it, the importance of it is huge. The implications are vast. So by all means, you know, by all means, Ganjang is definitely a prominent member uh, of Suni Tang is a prominent member of the Ganjang formula family. Right? Primary formula family is of course foods, right? Because it's a Shaoyin formula, right? So foods is the primary ingredient. You cannot treat the cold hands without foods. Right? You could definitely make a dent in the cold hands without the ganjang, right? because sometimes you take it out, you know, but like a, uh, a certain form is like zin wutang and stuff like that. If a person has cold hands and you give them a zin wutang, the, the, the hands will warm up a bit, but it won't be the same as, if they, as when they warm up with a sunni tang, for example. Right? But, but, so the, the foods would be the primary formula family. And it is the Fuzi family married into or married with the Ganjang family. And then the Fuzi Ganjang is the secondary formula family, second tier. If you really want to figure out, oh, they're East Coast branch, but it's, it's, it's from my sister's side of the family. So it's that branch of the East Coast branch. Right? So you can kind of start to trace it uh, to a bit more of a detail, uh, just like smaller families. Right? So based on that. So full spectrum function. So if the herb is in there, it's part of that family. Sometimes an herb is in there in a very um, not so prominent uh, capacity, which actually also still makes it a member of that formula family. Right? You could say, for example, Joshi Shei by Guizhi Tang has only three grams of Guizhi in it, right? But it's still a very important herb in that formula because there is upward movement, there is pulsations, right? It's just not the. It's not a huge dose of it. Which brings us in very difficult territory. I would say that uh, dosaging is a difficult subject matter. It looks easy, but it's not. Because every time you think you've figured out the pattern, you see the next, the next formula, and then you realize you still know jack shit about it because you're still going to be confused. So there's, there's a, there is definitely a pattern to be discerned. However, there's a ton of variations and exceptions to the rules. Which, you know, it's a nice way of saying, well, the exceptions confirm the rule. Yeah, I don't really know if it's true, <laughs> if exceptions truly confirm the rule. You know, they just confuse the rule. That's all they do for me. But um, the dosaging is diff difficult to really understand. Um, but the fact that that herb is in there still makes it prominent. Still, still makes it prominent. So it is still a greater formula family, right? But it's an, an inferior dosage. So very often you'll see that even... It, if it's, even if there's a bit of a, an inkling of a, a greater pulse in that patient's pattern, it's not going to be the same prominence of a greater pulse as you would have in a 
in a true Guizhou Tang or Guizhou Tang variation, right? So, but still, like if that left twin wants to float a bit, you could still say, well, you know, it's maybe not. It's a bit more floaty on the left twin than I would have thought as the standard Jishu Shea by Guizhou Tang pulse. But you know, that could just be the Guizhou aspect of the formula. So it kind of still fits. Yeah, it's a Guizhou pulse, and there is a little bit of Guizhou in this formula that could still fit. Right, something like that. Um, yeah, so the herb methods are referenced by Zhang Zongjing. He's got, you know, you can read those lines by yourself. You know, he talks about Guizhou Fa, the concept where he talks, he uses the word Guizhou Fa, the Guizhou method, the Guizhou method, Guizhou Fa. Or he talks about Chai Hu Fa, right? Uh, the Chai Hu method. So those are all places where he himself uses the concept of Fa, of method as uh, in his words, in his own words, right? So I always like to kind of trace back the origin. Like, where does this whole concept of a herb method come from? Where does the concept of a formula family come from? Well, these concepts come from Zhang Dongjing himself. The beauty of Zhang Dongjing is um, that he, the nice thing about him, what I very much appreciate is that he actually, he puts the onus on us. He gives us the responsibility. He will just point something out but he won't spell it out. And I like that. I don't like being talked down to. I don't like to, I don't like it. The worst thing you could do is when you're lecturing, I think as a teacher, the worst thing you can do when you're teaching is to assume that your audience knows less than you and to talk down to your audience. Right there, as soon as people feel that, you lose half of your audience. You break the confidence right away. You always talk as, like, as high as possible. And you'll, you'll lose a few. That's true, but that's called survival of the fittest, and that's fine too. Not everybody will make the cut. Not everybody has to make the cut, right? But I'll set the bar, and I'll challenge you to rise to that occasion and see if you want to make that cut. And that's a personal decision. We can't force that. I can't force that. But I'll always talk as high as possible, like try to bring you here rather than just talk down to you. Right? So the same, that's the same teaching style that Zhang Dongjing employs in his writing. He'll mention a concept in one line, but actually what he's saying is that basically my mind works like this. I think with this concept in mind. I have the concept of formula families or formula generations in my mind. I have the concept of herb methods in my mind. I'm only going to give you a few examples and I'm just going to point that concept out to you. It's up to you to then look at every formula and every line of the book with that in mind, just as I do. So he's basically shedding, he's sharing with you how his mind works. Right? There's a few lines that talk about resolution times. Right? Taiyang uh, tends to resolve between 9 and 3. Right? Uh, Xiaoyang tends to resolve uh, 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. Uh, Xiaoyang tends to resolve between 3 a.m and uh, 11, uh, 9 a.m., something like that. Like, he's got those resolution times, right? He uses stems and branch concepts for that, right? And then he never talks about that again, nowhere in the book. There's no clinical application mentioned for it or anything like that. Does that mean he doesn't have one? No, he has one, but it's implicitly buried in the text. It's behind the lines. It's between the words. You know, and it's up to us to, if you want to rise to that occasion, he just gave you a task. He just set a bar for you. He said, I'd like you to come here, meet me here, and you'll find something really interesting. He's basically giving you a roadmap for your own study and your own development. And then he says, this is a really good point to get to. Try to get to this. It's like with kids, right? You know, you want kids to jump, you're like, all right, high five. <laughs> right? And if they, can ha if they can get it, then you'll go higher and see if they can still get it, right? That's the thing. You're always moving the mile post, uh, the, the, the goal post. I'll always move the goal posts on you, trust me. You'll never feel like you got it. It's true, because I don't get it either. I don't have a teacher anymore who's moving my goal posts. I mean, he's alive, but he doesn't really teach me anymore. But that's fine, because he's, he's taught me how to move my own goal posts. He's taught me how to read the text, and how the text becomes a teacher. How he's brought Zhang Dongjing alive to me. And I've, I've learned how to listen to what Zhang Dongjing is really trying to say behind the words and, and beyond what's at, there at face value. 
right? So I'll constantly find new things in the text as well. I'll be like, wait a minute, this implies yada, 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 yada. Right? One line in the whole Jingwei, like one, well, two fragments of a line, and if you put them together, it's one line that talks about small intestine physiology. And because of that, we've, you know, me and, 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 and Lori uh, have been working on an article on that. You know, we're, we're trying to bring back um, the whole importance of the small intestine that is just not mentioned in the whole, shahan, in the whole uh, of Chinese medicine. You know, so Zhang Dongjing obviously had a concept. But he just kind of put it there, and then it's up to us to, to open it up. Because then if it gets opened up by us, it, it, it's going to stay. It's going to be the real deal. It's rather than just him telling you, and then you might not, it might not even register. You know what I mean? So it's a very interesting style of, of teaching that he uses. It's a very empowering, but he's definitely putting the responsibility on us. Right? We have to meet him. He's not going to come down and meet us. Right? And, and you know what, that's, I, that's, I appreciate that the most. So you see throughout the lines, and with any concept, you know, like formula equivalency is another subject matter that I did, I, I, uh, I've been working on in my mind. It's called formula equivalency, and that culminated in me uh, last May, May of 2012, then teaching a seminar for the first time on it in Germany. Um, so I've been talking about formula equivalency for a long time. Zhang Dongjing has a few sentences in the book where he basically says something, something, something f governs, like some formula is in charge of this problem, comma, something, something, other formula also governs, right? And he's got a few places like that. So what he's telling you is that this formula treats this pattern, but you know what? This formula treats also this pattern. But what that means is that these, this is the same clinical presentation, but two completely different formulas that can address it. Right? And that's what we call formula equivalency. So then I started looking, well, if he's saying that there's, you know, giving you a few examples left and right, he's basically saying, use this, understand what that means, understand the implication, learn to think in those terms, and apply it across the board to all the formulas. And that's what I did. So then I came up with equivalency for every formula in the book. I mean, I didn't get that far because that will probably take me another half a lifetime. But at least I came up with, you know, equivalency for, I don't know, 150, 200 prescriptions which basically is a, it's extremely important in clinic because what happens is that patient comes in, everything fits. Pulse fits, symptoms fit. You're like, yeah, this is the formula. Here you go. Patient comes back, didn't work. And you're like, I don't have anything else. It doesn't make sense. It's the same. It's the pulse. You know, it's right here. It's these symptoms. It should have worked. Yeah. It should have worked, but, and it will work. It might be that you have to use the, an equivalency formula. For example, the good, best example is patient comes in, young deficiency of the lower burner, right? Difficult urination, right? Frequent during the day, frequent during the night. The flow isn't really good. The strength isn't really good, that kind of stuff. You're like, oh, easy. Faint pulse, deep pulse, weak pulse, little wiry in the left shirt, right? Jin Wutang, easy. <laughs> right? Patient comes back, no result. You're like, wait a minute, I'm, you know, you're upping your aconite, you're like really pushing it hard, you know, no side effects either. Yeah. Pulse stays the same, everything the same. Didn't work. You're, and then you realize, wait a minute, this is not a functional problem alone, this is also a material problem. So yes, I am actually spark plug, I put a new spark plug in the, in, in the kidneys, like I'm, I'm firing it up, but I forgot to put gas in the tank. I don't care how good you, and how expensive your spark plugs are and how well you clean the cylinders and you took those pistons out and you soaked them and they're all cleaned out and everything. There's nothing, nothing in your engine that is preventing it from starting up. Oh, I forgot to put gas in it. Sent you one first. Sent you one as a material formula. It does exactly the same thing. It also puts gunk back in the kidneys and all that stuff, but it also puts gas in the, in the, in the tank. It also puts blood in your kidneys. Because just trying to spark it, if there's no gas, it, I don't care how good your car is, it's just not going to happen. You can buy a brand new Ferrari. If you don't put gas in it, that car is never going to light up. Right? So then it's a material problem. You put them on a cinch one for a little while, things start working. All of a sudden, the kidneys, the tank is full. Ding, 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 tank is full. Oh, the overflow alarm goes off at the gas station. Okay, what, what's the overflow alarm for a cinch one? Darker, loose stools, right? It's the, 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 the grease of the shengdi coming out of your body, right? Oh, that's it. Boom. Switching back to, to zin wutang. <laughs> Revving the ponies. There you go, right? That's exactly how that works. Those formulas do exactly the same thing. If one didn't work, 
It's probably because it's its equivalent counterpart that's going to do the job. Right? So once you get a view of that, I mean, then a whole world of clinical practice, the whole, your clinical practice receives a whole other dimension, which is, the, you know, um, um, if this, you know, in case of something not working, you go to the next formula. But also, after I've done this, how do I follow up? What's the next formula to follow up with? Like, I've done using this formula. What's the next, you know? Long story short, I'm digressing. What I'm trying to say is that all of that stuff is in the book. It's just up to us to get it out. It's all in there. He just points it, points it out. And that's what a good teacher does. That's what my teacher did. He never really explained a lot. He just told me where to look and kind of somehow told me what to look for. And that was it. And then it was up to me to do that. And so this is the same thing here uh, with Zhang Dongjing. You know, so you just read the book. Keep that in mind henceforth when you read the book. What is he saying at face value? Okay, I get it, I understand it. What is he saying behind the lines? Can I get something else out of it? And can I let that be the further guide for my study? If you're able to do that, you'll get things out of the text that even I might not have gotten out of it. Not because you're smarter or no, but just because you're a different person, you have a different brain than me. And that's how a body of knowledge evolves. Not by one person's effort, but by a collective of people's efforts. Right? That's, that's the goal. So you go from one herb method to multiple herb methods, right? And that's the basic concept that they love teaching in TCM, right? Herb pairs, herb trios. I always, I always hated classes like that. I'm like, let's just teach formulas, people, you know. And just, but uh, they love it because it, it breaks it down to like um, smaller structures, and 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 somehow uh, that's easier for us to to grapple with. I still think that. So here, when we're going to talk about combined herb methods or, 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 or so, uh, we're not going to do it to better understand the formula. We're just going to do it to have more uh, subcategories of our basic, you know, subcategories of the main categories, right? You've got the Guiji, if, you have, if, you're in a li if you're a librarian. A librarian would totally appreciate this class. Mm -hmm. Totally, right? Actually, I should find a female librarian to teach this class. <laughs> <laughs> I get visions of pencil skirts and everything. And so, um, glasses like this a little bit, you know. <laughs> I just, uh, that was a very revealing comment, wasn't it? I know, I'm sorry. I apologize. I'm attracted to brains too, okay? <laughs> so, uh, herb methods, for example, ganjang method, ganjang method. Everybody's like, oh my god, it's only 10 o'clock. <laughs> ganjang method, right? Ganjang method, um, every formula that has ganjang in it in a prominent dose is a formula of, that is a member of the ganjang formula family, right? Because ganjang plays a very pivotal role. Now, no one thing is that when we looked at all of our formulas in the archetypes, we had the inner circle of the 25 of the Tangyeji, right? And then we had a few more beyond the inner circle that actually were, that were already in the outer circle because the, the hierarchy was decided by the Tang Yijing. But actually, as far as our system is concerned, was still, are still very, very important herbs, right? You've got the 25, and then you've got like the Chai Hu that wasn't in there. You've got the Dang Wei that wasn't in there. You've got the Shigao that wasn't in there. You know, this very important formulas for the confirmations that we didn't have in there yet in the inner circle, right? An herb of the inner circle, if an herb, an inner circle herb is in a formula, hands down that formula is going to belong to that inner circle. As, as one of its primary allegiances, it's definitely going to be uh, inner circle, right? Because that's a firm statement because of the importance of that particular herb, right? There's a few herbs of the outer circle that are still extremely important, right? But there's going to be herbs that are just kind of, they're like fringe, little fringe families, like the, the, the degenerates living somewhere in the hills somewhere. You know what I mean? So um, you're not really wanting to say, yeah, I'm kind of related to them. You know, it's like a little bit of an embarrassing thing to be related to them. So, so then we, won't, we just won't, don't want to go there. And those are what we call those specialty herbs. And those are very commonly used in the Jingwei. It's an herb that is used maybe in one formula, right? Jiubei Mu. Okay, you know, this... There's, there's two formulas that use Jobemu, and one we don't even teach because it's got all these other toxic stuff like Bado and stuff in it. And then was it like Sanwu Beiji or Sanwu Beiji one or something like that? Like, let's not even go there. It's weird and toxic, and I've never used it, so I'm never going to be the first one to try it anyway. Um, so, and then you've got Dangwe Beimu Kushen one. And so there's one formula with Beimu in it. So are we going to talk? Okay, let me teach you the Beimu 
formula family? No, because it's so small, it's just one formula. It's just one person, one sole survivor. Right? It's Daniel Day Lucas. Then Daniel Day Lewis in, in the, what is it, the Mohicans one? Yeah, Last of the Mohicans, right? It's like, dude, come on. Like, nobody cares. All right. Um, he was white anyway. Was that? He was white anyway. He w oh my God, that's so racist. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's enough about that movie, all right. <laughs> no, but it's like, you know, it's just not worth mentioning because it's, it's too far-fetched. It doesn't really contribute to anything. We're going to look at the primary herbs, right? So how to really know, is that herb really as prominent in that formula? Should we put it under, you know, for example, because you get a certain pulse, would it be indi indicative of that formula family? You're going to look at... You know, is it an inner circle herb or an outer circle herb? If it's an outer circle, is it one of the prominent outer circle ones? For example, you could say um, that any, f any herb that is one of the core herbs for a uh, six conformation uh, treatment, you know, like for Taiyang, we had a few, you know, for example, we had Guizhi, uh, Ma uh, Huang, Fuling. For Yangming, we have Gugun, Shigao, Ta Huang, Mang Xiao, right? Those are all. And they're not all inner circle, but they're all really, really prominent, right? So you can still identify them as really prominent subfamilies then, like second tier families, right? But then if you're going to say, so how about Huang Bai? I mean, it gets a bit more obscure. How about uh, Zhu Ling? You know, it gets a bit more removed because ultimately there's not that many formulas with those herbs in them, which of course makes it easy. But then you wouldn't really say, oh, it has, this is the first formula family you're gonna, I'm going to think about when I get this kind of pulse. Might not be the right thing to do. Right? So you kind of look at how, how probable is it that this herb is going to play a very pivotal role in deciding what family you belong to. It's basically going to be like, if you were that family, how likely are you going to identify with that fringe member? Where you, you know, is that going to be a prominent thing or not? Right? It'll become very, actually pretty clear, though. There's very few... Very few confusions in the system. You're looking at the dosaging, inner or outer circle allegiance, importance in the confirmations, right? That kind of stuff. That, that'll decide on it. So you can have Ganjang method, for example, a lot of formulas with Ganjang, and then you can have a subfamily of that. So that could be the Ganjang Wu Weizhi subfamily in, in the case of cough. The most prominent uh, symptom for Ganjang formula family, you can't say that. <laughs> you can't really identify the Ganjang family with one symptom. Because ganjang could be respiratory symptoms, ganjang could be circulatory symptoms, ganjang could be digestive symptoms, right? They, it's at least going to be one of these three. Circulatory as in, you know, cold hands and feet, ganjang, right? S uh, digestive as in diarrhea or vomiting, ganjang. And then um, respiratory as in cough, asthma, ganjang. Right? Those, are, that, those would be the, the primary ones. And then you've got a bunch of secondary indications for ganjang, right? For example, bleeding patterns. Bleeding is also a ganjang indication. Right? So then also there's a possibility that you might have to identify certain patients who have bleeding problems from a ganjang perspective. Right? Bo ye tang, jiao jiang tang, even as simple as li jiong wan, right? Could all be using ganjang for bleeding, right? Bai tong tang, right? Those are all ganjang formulas that you could use for bleeding, right? So um, primary formula, you can't really say ganjang, oh, you, I, ganjang, I know exactly what to do, what formula to choose. No, there's too many to choose from because that's the full spectrum. The highest tier, the highest hierarchically highest standing for, formula uh, uh, um, member of the formula, it's a, that's going to be full spectrum, not yet guided in a certain direction through combinations. Right? Ganjang Wu Weizhi is definitely not full spectrum. With Ganjang Wu Weizhi, you're not, you're never going to use a Ganjang Wu Weizhi combo for a patient who's got vomiting. Right? That wouldn't be the right treatment. Ganjang Wu Weizhi is for the respiratory aspect of Ganjang, not for the digestive aspect of Ganjang. Ganjang Baiju would be the subfamily of Ganjang, the second tier that would treat the respiratory aspect of Ganjang. And very specifically, symptomatically then, this, the, 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 the subfamily of Ganjang, the Ganjang Baiju family, that treats the digestive aspect with Ganjang, but with its main symptomology being a downward movement of yin turbidity. Right? While Ganjang Ban Sha, for example, would be more for upward movement of yin turbidity with vomiting and stuff like that. Right? So you can then, then you can really see, okay, I need Ganjang for respiratory stuff. Right? Then you can ask, do you have vomiting or do you have diarrhea? 
right? If it's vomiting, it could also be shengjiang because you can't really know shengjiang or ganjiang from the pulse, right? That's the same tightness on, on, that, on the pulse, right? That's the same thing, right? So then if it's shengjiang bansha, it's going to be more vomiting. If it's ganjiang baiju, it'll be uh, more diarrhea, right? And then you could kind of go from there. So that it has implications as far as also what questions you would ask for the patient and what symptoms you would go for to identify what subfamily of what primary family. So you got ganjiang wu wei But if it's a, like a lot of cold, there's an, another mini family attached to the ganjiang wu wei family, which would be ganjiang wu wei shishin, right? Linggang wu wei jiang xin tang, linggang wu wei jiang xin xia tang, linggang wu wei jiang xin xia xin tang, linggang wu wei jiang xin jia da huang bang xia xin ren tang, right? Xiao qing long tang, xiao qing long jia shi gao tang, uh, ganjiang wu wei shishin, uh, hopo ma huang tang, Right? Those are all the formulas that have ganjang, u, u, uh, ganjang wubeza and shishin in it. There none, uh, there's no other. Those are all, I just listed them. So if you've identified that you need ganjang wubeza because there's a respiratory that is of taiyin nature, cold contraction of the lungs right, with, with impending damp, and there's a lot of cold water, runny nose, stuffy nose, lots of cold water in the lungs, right? you've identified ganjang wubeza shishin as what you need, right? lots of tightness on the right turn, for example, then all formulas but the ones I just mentioned, you can forget them temporarily. You've just eliminated 270-some formulas from your mind stream. And you're only looking at a selection of about six, seven formulas that are left. And then in that, you can say, is the problem acute or is the problem chronic? Because some formulas are Shanghan and some formulas are Jingwei. Right? And then Right there, oh, it was acute, boom. Forget about the Jingwei ones for the time being. Right, let's look at the Shanghan ones. Sha Qing Long, Sha Qing Long, Jia Shi Gao. Right, there you go. Or the Nu Tang modification with Gan Jiang Shi Xin Wu Wei Right, so it's, it's an, it, like I said, it's an algorithmical system of elimination. You're constantly Im eliminating this from the other and then the, the, the options get smaller, right? It's, it's like one of those uh, line diagrams that you, know, you used to, when you did computer, programming language training, right? What do, you, what do we call those? Uh, branch tree. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's like, if yes, go left. If no, go right. And then, you know, you, that's how it all, ultimately, you get your final answer at the end. It's just like that. You eliminate one thing from the other. Uh, Guizhi method. Do you know what symptom is going to be the primary symptom? There's no way of knowing. If you just say, oh my God, I got a Guizhi pulse, right? Patient comes in, got a Guizhi pulse. Do you know exactly what their symptom is going to be? Can you say, aha? No, you can't. Don't even try because you, the chances that you're on, of course, you, the, you know, if you're observing the whole thing. But if I just say a patient comes in and they have a left twin floating, right, greater method, what's going to be their main symptom? You can't answer that question. You can say, or this, or that, or this, or that. You can list a few because the full spectrum functions of greater. But you can't for sure know which one it is, right? But if I say patient comes in, greater pulse, Primary symptom, dysmenorrhea. Oh, then you can start to already list a few symptoms. And then you can say, well, could be very excessive blood stasis or could be more deficient blood stasis. The deficient blood stasis, you need to be more warming formulas and melting away. The excessive blood stasis, you need to attack it. Right? Could be guizhi da huang based. Could be guizhi dangwei based. Could, could be guizhi taoren based without the da huang. Right? And, and so forth, you can kind of work, work that, that way. So same thing, Guizhi Da Huang, Guizhi Da Huang Taurin, and so forth, right? You can have Guizhi Da Huang indications that have nothing to do with blood stasis, right? Patient comes in, Guizhi pulse, Da Huang pulse, abdominal pain, no blood stasis. Guizhi Jia Da Huang Tang, right? Has nothing to do with blood stasis. It's an abdominal pain formula, right? Uh, so, so that's kind of the symptom will inform what group of that, of that full spectrum, what part of the full <coughs> spectrum that you're in. So what are the Shahan Zabing Lun formulas? All the formulas by Zhang Dongjing. Now, this is also very important. In China, they've done this very weird thing, which is that, uh, I mean, this, this weird, weird this, they, well, they do a lot of weird things. Um, departmentalization of our medicine, right? Started happening in late Tang Dynasty. And it just came, you remember that one chart that I once drew, like 
you know, the mind that is more synthesizing versus the mind that's more analytical. The synthesizing kind of whole systems thinking mind was the dominant way of thinking in Han Dynasty, and it's been on a gradual decline towards now, right? And then the more analytical mind was really weak in Han Dynasty, and it's been on a gradual incline until now. So now we've got this inverse, inverted way of thinking. Like we, we're very good at analysis, but we're very bad at seeing the big picture. Right? And learning Chinese medicine basically means you have to learn to l analyze less and just uh, summarize more, like see the big picture more than just the, the small, tiny elements uh, uh, isolated from each other. Right? So as that mind started going more towards uh, analysis, which means cutting things into pieces, into smaller pieces, so you can kind of hone in on the smaller items rather than keep looking at the big picture. As the human mind started going, developing towards that, and why does it develop towards that? Just because of bad karma. Just because we suck, that's why. And so, uh, and we're doomed too, for the record. And so, basically, you know, the medicine started changing too. Science started changing. The way people started thinking started changing. So they started departmentalizing the medicine, right? In Han, uh, Han Dynasty. Tang Dynasty, it, that's what it started. In Song Dynasty, officially everything was departmentalized. You had the acupuncture department, Tuena uh, section, acupuncture section, uh, herbal medicine section, internal medicine section, section, gynecology section, blah, 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 blah. Uh, 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 spells and incantations section. You know what I mean? Like there's all these different sections. That, that's what we call the 13 categories of medicine. So of course now in China that's also happened, right? You look at the universities, right? And you meet a professor, oh, this is professor so-and-so, he's a Jingwei Yalui expert. Fine, right, no problem, interesting, interesting person, I like people like that, you know, they're interested in stuff that I'm interested in, that's fine. But then, you ask a question about Shanghan, or you want him to use a Shanghan formula, and he doesn't necessarily, I mean, they always know a little bit, of course, but it's not really his thing. And I'm like, why do you choose to walk through life limping on one leg. Because the original book was, had two legs, Shanghan and Jingwei, right? And the goal is that you walk with both. Because a human being, his health or her health is decided by some acute factors and some chronic factors, right? Some, um, I don't know, your constitutional issues, right? And you're just recently, uh, hey, I fell off a tree, I fell out of a tree issues. Right? Like there's always something recent and something chronic, and that's just the nature of life. So why would you choose to only know the forms that treat the chronic internal stuff and not learn about the forms that treat the external stuff, right? And especially not, why would you do that when those formulas were all designed by the same person? And they're often just variations uh, on the same theme, right? Guizhi Tang, right? You could change it into a million ways and it'll become a Jingwei formula, right? You can't say, you cannot deny that Wen Jingtang is still a Guizhi Tang modification. You can't deny that Wen Jingtang is a Dangwe Suni Tang modification, right? You can't deny that uh, Hopo Ma Huang Tang is a Xiao Qinlong Tang modification, right? Or that it even is a Da Qinlong Tang modification. You can't deny those things. Right? I mean, if you are a formula scholar, I mean, I'm not a scholar. I mean, people throw that word around a bit too, too lightly. Uh, I'm a, you know, a formula researcher, maybe, but I'm not a scholar. But you know, I've got two graduate degrees in formulas. And so the, the, if you're looking at formulas and you try to trace the, the, the pedigree of a formula, the ancestry of a formula, then you can really look how, through time, the formulas got modified and became other formulas. Right? You can really do that. I mean, Shaya-san comes from Sunni-san. Hands down, right? That's the, the method, the Chaku Baisha method, right? So you can trace, trace back that, those formulas. So basically, when you're studying Zhang system, it's one big, happy, incestuous family, right? Everybody's happy. Nobody's being forced of anything. You know, it's all, it's all, in, it's all mutual consent. Uh, you're supposed to use the whole spectrum, the, all the formulas, the whole system, not just one slice of it. This is full scope of practice of medicine, not just I'm only going to treat when they have a sniffles. I'm not going to treat the rest. Now I'm going to treat everything, right? So Don Ding tr treated acute stuff as well as chronic stuff. He treated acute abdomen, like surgical conditions, as well as open wounds and sores on the skin. He treated gynecology. He treated obstetrics as much as he treated like rhinitis or sinus, sinus problems, sinusitis, 
right? Whatever, it doesn't matter. First line of defense, true primary care. This is true family medicine, right? I mean, what we would call family medicine or what we would call just like primary care, which is the first line of defense. The person first comes to see you for health care, right? That is the, our medicine. That is Zandongjing's system, right? He is the diagnostician. He is the internist. He is the gynecologist. He is all of that all in one. He's like an old school doctor in the countryside, you know, like a, uh, like a, vi a village doctor who would basically tackle every problem, right? There went, at a time when there was no departmentalization, when there was no specialization, he was both the generic as well as the special. You know, he was everything. So that's kind of, so you have to use everything together. Because if you know the Shahan formulas, you'll have an easier time understanding the Jingwei formulas. Not the other way around, though. Knowing Jingwei formulas does not necessarily guarantee that you have a better time understanding Shahan formulas. Because it was Shahan formulas that became Jingwei formulas, not Jingwei formulas that became Shahan formulas. Right? That said, knowing Shahan formulas doesn't mean that you can understand every Jingwei formula. There are lots of Jingwei formulas that have nothing to do with Shahan formulas, that developed completely independently, that basically fell out of the sky because it's just a formula that somebody used at that time that seemed to work, and Zhang Nongjing just adopted it into the system in the Jingwei, not in the Shanghan. Right? So it's very important that you learn both. You have to learn to walk with both legs. That's why the formula family class actually will be Shanghan and Jingwei formulas all together. There is no way to separate that. I mean, I could separate that, I just don't want to. Right? I don't want to. Because you, you have to learn to see them all together as one uh, coherent system. Right? And then you can just look at you know, um, all the different formula methods and, 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 and um, more broad and, and simple as, as you want, right? So you could say, what are the primary six confirmation methods? Well, you know, Taiyang is Guizhi, right? Yangming is Shigao, Xiaoyang is Chaihu, whatever. Or, or if you want to call it, it doesn't even matter if it's accurate or not. You know, you could say, well, uh, Taiyang is Guizhi, but Yangming is Da Huang, right? And Xiaoyang is uh, Huang Qin, right? And Taiyin is Renshen, right? That would also be true. That would, you know, that would not necessarily be wrong, right? So, um, it all depends on kind of what the angle is that you're going to take. The goal is identifying primary groups of formulas. Like, and those will be very large, prominent groups. Even though, like for example, let's say a Chaihu family is not a very large family. But in service of uh, you know, the clinical setting of healthcare, it's a very prominent family. It's very important that you that you have a good grasp of the Chaihu family because it's a very important herb. You need, to tr you need it to treat uh, people. Like if you're thinking of the Tang Yejing, right? The Chaihu and the Guizhi, ta the Chaihu Tangs and the Guizhi Tangs, they were the Yin Don and the Yang Don decoctions. They had their own separate category and those were the true Yin Yang formulas, right? And then you had the six Qi formulas, which is what we call the six confirmation formulas, right? Blue Green Dragon, Black, t black Warrior, whatever, whatever. And then you had the organ formulas, right? Uh, uh, so the, the liver, spleen, kidney, and a major, minor tonification reduction formulas, right? And then all of those together, so it was the two, the five, and the six, just like with everything else in our medicine. And those are the, the three primary symptoms, systems of thought, the, pre, the th three primary structures of our medicine. Yin-yang, five phases, six qi, right? And... 2 times uh, 5 times 6 equals 60. And there are only 60 primary possibilities. And every variation upon that theme is going to be just a variation upon the 60. Right? In the original calendar of China, of, a of a ancient China, there were only 60 years. And then everything else was a repetition of those 60 years. So everything was a repetition of those 60. Right? So how many degrees on a circle? 360, right? Six times that primary 60, right? And it all comes from yin yang, five phases, six chi. Right? So that doesn't change, right? How many uh, acupuncture points? 360. How many single herbs in the Ben Jing? 360. How many formulas in the Tang Jing? 360, right? I think we should reset our tuition to just 360. <laughs> <laughs> be much, 
it's be symbolic. And my annual salary to 108,000. <laughs> Just saying, Andrea. Um, and as my knowledge grows, I'll come up with bigger numbers. <laughs> And then, so, and then you can also say, well, that, those, if those are primary herb methods, if you say, okay, well, Taiyang is Guizhou, that's the primary one, right? But you can also say, well, Guizhou Tang, right, is primary, obviously, but how about Ma Huang? Well, I've already said, aside from the fact that Ma Huang actually is not really, you know, Taiyang, it's more Taiyin. But you, should, should you accurately should identify the primary Taiyang formula families as the Guizhou Baisha formula families or the Guizhou Ma Huang formula families, right? We've talked about that already before which is, it means that you're either harmonizing nutritive and protective with the Guizhou tongue and all of its derivative structures, or you're just breaking open the blood with Guizhou Ma Huang formulas, right? So uh, all the Ma Huang tongue and its derivatives, right? Ta Qing Long tongue and stuff like that, right? So then you could say the Ma Huang method would be like a secondary method, right? Or the Fuling method, right? Fuling alone, Arno, can you use uh, Fuling alone for, uh, for Taiyang disease for the bladder? No, you can't. It's going to have to be Guizhou based because it's Taiyang disease. And it's going to be the, f the subcategory of the Guizhou families that are the ones that are married to Fuling. Right? So it's Guizhou Fuling formula families that are the secondary formula families. Right? And that's the, your second class. Right? So it's going to be Guizhou, Guizhou Fuling. Right? Now, if you're doing Guizhou Fuling for palpitations, it's going to be Guizhou Fuling Ganshao subcategory. Right? You can't treat palpitations without Ganshao. Right? But if it's just treating the bladder like a Wuling San, there's no Ganshao in there. Zhenwutang, there's no gantao in there. Why? Well, you don't want to tonify, you don't want to put more water in the system when you're trying to get water out of the system. Right? So, Guizhou Fuling Gantao, or, you know, well, you, well, yeah, but you know what I mean. Like, so, so you look at primary family, and then you start to kind of, like, move away from that th theme, and then kind of, based on the clinical need, subdivide your category. Right? So primary method, Guizhou, secondary method, Taiyang. Uh, for Taiyang is Ma Huang or Fuling or something like that. Gugen for Yang Ming, Da Huang for Yang Ming, Huang Lin for Yang Ming, Zhu Ye for Yang Ming. Those are all secondary herb methods for Yang Ming. Right? Huang Qin, Zhishu for Xiaoyang, Renshen, Maimendong, Wu Weizi, Ban Sha, Bai Zhu. I mean, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Those are all, all kind of um, still prominent, still big family, but less prominent and less big as the ones uh, bef that we first talked about, the primary ones, right? And you'll see the size of the family is going to be a lot different as well, right? So let's say, I mean, very, very simply put, let's say patient comes in and um, presents with, um, you know, like a Yang Ming pulse, like which could be Gugen or which could be Huang Lian or which could be Da Huang, for example, right? They come in with that. And they also come in with a uh, 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 Taiyang pulse, like a Guizhou pulse. So then you still don't really know exactly what formula to give. You just know you have a Taiyang Yang Ming combined disease, right? So that could be Guizhou and Gugen based, right? It could also be Shigao and Guizhou based, right? By Hu Jia Gui Tang. It could also be um, uh, uh, Guizhou and Shigao based, Da uh, Qinglong Tang. It could also be um, Guizhou and Da Huang based, Guizhou Da Da Huang Tang. Right? You can't really know yet just from that. But then, how do you then really know? Well, you, you know you're kind of looking at those different basic family, then the subfamilies. Then how do you really know? That's when you ask, what's your primary chief complaint? And then immediately you will know. Abdominal pain, oh, Guizhou Jia Da Huang Tang. Right? Stiff neck and nape and shoulders, ah, oh, Guizhou Jia Gugen Tang. Right? Uh, aversion to cold, chills, absence of sweating, within a, a high fever, oh yeah, oh my God, Da Qing Long Tang. Right? And so, so then you'll know exactly what formula to go to. Right? High fever with a little bit of body aches, oh, Bai Hu Jia Gui Tang. Oh my God, it's a Jing Gui formula. Malaria formula. You know? So those are kind of the, the, the things that will happen. Cool. Let's take a little break.